Good evening and welcome back. I'm Britt Hume and this is On the Record. There is potentially dramatic new information tonight about the FBI investigations into Hillary Clinton. Brent Baer will be here momentarily to give us a briefing. There are also new battleground state polls that show the races tightening in places where both candidates are competing hard. Let's first look at the state of the race nationally. The Real Clear Politics average of polls shows Clinton leading Donald Trump by 1.7 points in a two-way race, 1.9 points in a four-way race. The betting odds, meanwhile, continue to favor her, but by less than three to one. These numbers represent the closest the race has been since Donald Trump inched ahead by a point back in late July. We'll take a deeper look at those polls shortly, but first, let's find out more about what my colleague Brett Baer has learned about the FBI, the Justice Department, and the investigation of the Clinton Foundation. Brett, good evening. Hey, Brett. Bring me up to date. Well, first of all, just ran right over from I the studio. I appreciate that. Yeah, well, well. Uh, here's the deal. We, we talked to two separate sources with intimate knowledge of uh, what's going on with these FBI investigations. A couple of things. One, uh, the Clinton Foundation investigation is far more expansive than anybody has reported, I think, so far. Yeah, because remember, Comey last July basically wouldn't comment on it, and we, and we kind of believed for a long time there wasn't much of a Clinton. Right, Foundation. and that was a, basically about Washington's influence in that. The several offices separately were doing their own investigations. Uh, that's one. Two, uh, remember the immunity deal that supposedly Cheryl Mills and Heather Samuelson, uh, two top aides for Hillary Clinton, right. got from the Justice Department in which uh, it was believed that the laptops that they had after a narrow review for classification emails were going to be destroyed by the FBI. We have been told that those definitively have not been destroyed. They are at the FBI field office here in Washington and are being exploited. Uh, three, uh, the Clinton Foundation investigation is so expansive, they have interviewed and re-interviewed many people. Uh, they describe the evidence that they have as, quote, a lot of it, and there is an avalanche coming every day with WikiLeaks and the new emails. They are, quote, actively and aggressively pursuing this case. Remember, the Foundation case is about the pay for play, the allegations right. of Secretary Clinton. Yeah, and people made contributions to the Clinton Foundation, and because of that, uh, they were able to, to extract uh, attention at least, and not, if not more, from the State Department. If I have that right? Exactly. Um, so they are taking the new information, and some of them are going back to interview people for the third time. Um, we, as opposed to what has been written about the Clinton Foundation um, investigation, it is expansive. Uh, the classified investigation is being run by the National Security uh, Division of the FBI. They are currently, as Catherine Harridge has reported, combing through Anthony Weiner's laptop, uh, and they are having some success, in other words, finding what they believe to be new emails, not duplicates, that have trends uh, been transported, if you will, uh, emailed through the server, right. Hillary Clinton's server. Um, lastly, we learned that there is a confidence from these sources that her server had been hacked um, and that it was about a 99% accuracy that it had been hacked by at least five foreign um, intelligence agencies and they believe that uh, things had been taken from that. Now, it sounds to me, Brett, as if what we have here is a much bigger investigation than we thought. What about the role of the Department of Justice in terms of, we know that the Department of Justice resisted some things the FBI wanted in the email investigation. How about the Department's role in this this aspect of the investigation, that involving the foundation? Yeah, this source and uh, two sources say it has not uh, been easy. They have not, uh, it has not been a smooth process. Uh, they believe that they are moving forward effectively now, but uh, there has been some angst about uh, Attorney General Loretta Lynch and what she has done or not done. She obviously did not impanel uh, or go to a, um, grand, a grand jury, grand jury from, right. at the beginning. Uh, they also have a problem, these sources do, with uh, what President Obama said today and back in October of 2015. Yeah, we're going to get to that later on in that he downplayed it, and today he said something that suggests that he's changed his tune a bit about, uh, about Director Comey. Yeah. This does not sound like something that's going to be completed anytime soon, which suggests that if Hillary Clinton is elected, she will take office with not one but two serious investigations of her past conduct hanging over her. Definitely. And I pressed again and again on this very issue. And these sources said, yes, the investigations will continue. There's a lot of evidence. And barring some obstruction in some way, 
they believe they'll continue to um, likely a, an indictment. Wow. Wow. Brett Baer, thanks, buddy. Thanks for coming across the whole at the end of your show and helping us out. Sure. Here. It seems tonight that Hillary Clinton's close personal aide, Uma Habedin, who has not been on the campaign, you may have noticed, for several days now, may be in some legal jeopardy of her own. Fox News Chief Intelligence Correspondent Catherine Harris is here. Catherine, what can you tell us? Well, as Brett was just mentioning, they're going through Anthony Weiner's computer. This is a computer that was a family computer and their records from his estranged wife, Uma Abedin. The reason it's an issue for her is that if there are classified records found on that computer, she has real legal jeopardy. And it's because she signed this separation agreement in 2013. And what it says is that I've given everything back to you. And if I have not given everything back to you, then I understand I can face criminal charges under the Espionage Act and other legitimate So statutes. the problem is, of course, that the laptop that belonged to Anthony Weiner that had all of this, all of her emails on it, obviously with th that stuff was not turned back, That's right? Exa yes, and when you look at the statutes that are listed in the separation agreement, there's nothing about intent. Director Comey has been very focused on intent in this case, but that is not what the separation agreements read. It's not what people agree to. Right, so in other words, she agrees to get this stuff back regardless. No matter what, exactly. And if, and if she didn't know that it was on the computer or something, that might, that might not get her, not no, get that's her off correct. the hook. That's correct. Right. And then also today, as you just mentioned with Brett, uh, the president weighed in on FBI Director Comey's investigation, and he seemed very almost dismissive. Yeah, we've got something we're going to hear a little bit about that later on. What, I wonder what effect do you think that might have? I think the point that's been missing in this discussion is that President Obama, with all due respect, really has a horse in this race and has a vested interest in the outcome. He was using uh, an alias. A personal account to communicate with Hillary Clinton he, on her he personal Obama, server. Right. Yes, correct. And we know from the State Department, who spoke on the record about this earlier this year, that there are about 18 to 24 records that were held, withheld, citing executive branch deliberations. Now, here's the important thing that sometimes people miss: President Obama's BlackBerry is a high security BlackBerry, and every address we talked about this last week, every address has to be clear. It's like a VIP list. Oh, so and Huma Abedin, in her FBI interview, said to agents, every time Mrs. Clinton changed her address, I had to tell the White House to make sure that his devices would accept it. So this is another admission that the White House understood that she was using this private server for government business and that the president was okay with it and his wow. team was okay with it because they were allowing updates to the email to be made. So he's got a real horse in the race here. He's not speaking as a dispassionate observer to what's happening. Catherine, thank you You're very welcome. much. Well, we'll have more about all this with our political panel later in the show. Now back to the election and the states which will decide the outcome. First, Florida, indispensable to Mr. Trump. A new Quinnipiac poll there has Clinton up by only one, 46 to 45. And a separate CNN poll out for Florida shows Clinton doing slightly better, but only pulling off a two-point lead, besting Trump 49, as you can see there, to 47. A few other states worth noting, Nevada, there the CNN poll has Trump up six. In mid-October, that same CNN poll had Clinton up, two, up by two. Did I say Clinton up six? I meant Trump. In Pennsylvania, Clinton is still ahead, but her lead has diminished some. Clinton is up by four points in the historically blue state. So let's try to make some sense of all this. I'm joined now by the veteran political strategist and Fox News contributor Carl Rove and by the pollster Darren Shaw, who is responsible for our Fox News polls and is likewise is also, I should say, a member of the Fox News decision desk. Carl, Darren, Darren thanks very much. Darren, let me go to you first quickly. Um, your thoughts on this, these poll results, uh, I assume that they would mean that Donald Trump has a path, uh, and probably a little wider path than it's been, but still not exactly a freeway to the election, right? <laughs> I think that interpretation is right, Britt. I mean, the, the thing that I would point out is, you know, there's a little bit of variation, not a lot, but a little bit of variation in the point estimates. You know, is he down two points or three points? That, that's meaningful, and we want to pay attention to that. But as you correctly observed, it's the trend, I think, that people are really kind of uh, ought to pay attention to right here. So even in the, the polls that have been most generous to Mrs. Clinton, you know, Trump has basically chopped about three points off her lead across this, these set of states. But, all, you know, I think all that's essentially done is gotten him from a sure loss to a position where he's on the verge of being competitive again, which is something a lot of us didn't think was in the cards about a week and a half ago. Carl, your thoughts? I think Darren's absolutely right. Um, uh, th there was good news for both candidates in these polls. For Trump, Arizona is firming up and, and remain in the column with its 11 electoral votes. Nevada, a swing state, moving into his column. Uh, uh, 
Good news, though, for her. She's holding Pennsylvania, which is 20 electoral votes. And more importantly, she's doing better in Florida than she has in, in, in recent uh, polls. Think about this. There's the so-called blue wall. These are the 18 states in the District of Columbia that the Democrats have won in every one of the last six presidential elections, 242 electoral votes. She wins Florida and the blue wall. She's president of the United States. Florida is the must-win state for Donald yeah. Trump in order to stay alive. He has to have it, yeah. yeah. Um, so he, he, Romney got 206 electoral votes, um, uh, and Obama got 332. Um, so Clinton, had, if she simply holds his states, right, uh, she's president. But she's down in Ohio. She's down in Ohio. And she's down in Iowa. And she's down in Iowa. And she's down in the real clear politics average in Florida. In Florida. So, but if he, so if he wins all of those, uh, Darren, all three of those, he's still not home, though, right? That's exactly right. Uh, I mean. You know, we've been talking for a long time about Ohio, North Carolina, and Florida as being the linchpin states to, you know, Trump being a position to win. I think that's still the case. I think he needs those. And as Carl pointed out, Nevada, I think, is increasingly obvious, has to be part of his coalition. And that gets him to within striking distance. But he still needs to, to knock off New Hampshire or Colorado or Pennsylvania, one of these other blue states. And even though he's crept within distance here, within striking distance, he's not there yet. So I, I, I agree with Carl's statement. There's some good news for her here. She seems to be holding steady. And this is even assuming he locks down a state like you know, North Carolina or Florida. And there's no evidence he's done that yet. He's still in a dogfight. In fact, she's probably got a slight edge in those states. Yeah, and, and, what, and North Carolina, we've been talking about North Everybody's talking about North Carolina this week. Yeah. North Carolina, of course, was carried. Uh, by Mitt Romney, if I remember correctly, Correct. and 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 right. she's ahead there. And if he loses that state, his path becomes not quite insurmountable, but, but I mean a, a very tall order. Yeah, particularly since she has a strong lead in Virginia. Think about this: the blue wall plus North Carolina plus Virginia lose everything else. She's still president of the United States. Well, Virginia was part of the that was part of the Obama uh, combination in in uh, 2012, and, and, and that looks and out two, and that's out of reach. And 2008 as well. Yeah, correct. That, and that looks out of reach to you, correct? Uh, I, I believe so. If you take a look at the real clear politics average, it's up there with with Pennsylvania in the in the high. Now, I, I know it's hard to assess at this stage the effect of these revelations in recent days and the reopening of the email investigation, and of course we've got what what Brett was just here talking about. Um, do we have any sense from this polling yet whether this is having a dramatic effect, a mild effect, or was it simply about where you thought this is, does this now lie, about where you thought it would lie with the kind of late closing that we've seen in so many races? Well, I think it was late closing. Uh, I think it is, the, the Friday announcement is having an effect. I don't think we're yet seeing it in the polls because most of these polls, the CNN polls were conducted after Friday. I'm, I'm, I'm dubious about polls conducted over the hollow, uh, Halloween weekend, right. so I think it may be tomorrow or the next day before we see it. But the problem is each side is so intractably tied into itself. Ninety, per, Ninety-five percent of uh, Clinton supporters in ABC Washington Post that had an unfavorable opinion of Trump. Ninety percent of them strongly unfavorable. Ninety-seven percent of Trump supporters had an unfavorable opinion of Clinton. Ninety percent of them strongly. And the undecideds? And, and third party uh, that were up for grabs, seven or eight percent. Darren, Carl, thank you both very much. There are new WikiLeaks emails out today that make clear the Clinton campaign was worried about those allegations of pay for play involving, as we've talked about, the Clinton Foundation. Fox News Chief National Correspondent Ed Henry has the story. Thank you. As Donald Trump continues to hammer his message that he'll root out corruption in Washington. We are going to Washington, D.C. And we are going to drain the swamp. WikiLeaks poured gasoline on the flames by releasing its 26th batch of emails from Clinton campaign chairman John Podesta's hacked Gmail account. In one email, campaign spokesman Brian Fallon laid out what seemed like a routine plan in 2015 to release Bill and Hillary Clinton's income tax returns. But buried in the email are Fallon's concerns about how activity at the Clinton Foundation might spark even more pay-for-play allegations. Quote, reporters will also scrutinize the 2013 speech list for overlap between speech hosts and campaign and foundation donors that could fuel pay-to-play storylines, wrote Fallon. Despite these inevitable angles, we will have given ourselves the best possible fighting chance of promoting the most helpful storylines. Thank you. Fallon was particularly worried about the former president's ties to Laureate University, 
a for-profit college which paid him nearly $18 million to be an honorary chancellor. Another email getting special attention appears to show a Justice Department official trying to tip off the campaign about developments in the Clinton email probe last year. In an email chain titled Heads Up, Assistant Attorney General Peter Kadzik warns Podesta about a congressional hearing and a government filing that could push release of Clinton's emails into the 2016 campaign window. Podesta forwarded the warning to others in Clinton's inner circle with the quote, additional chances for mischief. And since Kazik is now an important player at the Justice Department when it comes to notifying Congress about developments in the FBI's probe of Huma Abedin's email and Clinton server, Probably Republican Donald Trump cried foul on the campaign it. trail. One of the top Department of Justice officials involved in the email investigation, Assistant Attorney General Peter Kazik, is a close associate of John Podesta. Podesta's relationship with Kazik goes way back. The two are college buddies, and Kazik served as Podesta's lawyer during the investigation into the Monica Lewinsky scandal. In a previous WikiLeaks dump, Podesta commended Kazik during a 2008 email exchange, calling him a fantastic lawyer. Kept me out of jail. But the Justice Department is downplaying Kazik's more recent contact with Podesta, since his email in 2015 focused on a public hearing and a public filing about the email scandal. And even some Republicans like Trey Gowdy note, Kadzik has a limited role in the Aberdeen probe. But Peter Kadzik is not a decision maker. He is a messenger. And the Clinton camp tonight is dumping all over Donald Trump's charge that there's something improper here. There's two problems, though, two stubborn facts for the Clinton camp tonight. Number one, they've told us for well over a year there was this firewall between the Justice Department and the Clinton camp, and they weren't getting any information. And if this was just public information and not important, you have to wonder why Kazik did not put it on his Justice Department email. He put it on his Gmail. And look, Britt, a lot of people use Gmail. A lot of people use personal email in the workplace. But not when you're at Justice, yeah. not when you're at the no, White not House. Not when you're in Justice communicating with the White House. Yes, because this is about public records. There's federal laws saying that you have to use your official email, especially because their story is he was talking about Justice Department information, exactly. a hearing, a filing. Right. They don't want to hear that tonight. Great. Ed, thanks very it. much. Thanks. Right now, let's speed read some other news in the world of politics. The Republican National Committee is now starting to spend a lot of money on TV ads supporting Donald Trump. That's a change in plans from earlier in this cycle. However, now with the polls tightening, the RNC is funding at least $3 million in TV ads for Trump. Some of those ads attack Clinton over the FBI investigation and will air across the country. Iran's supreme leader says both Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump's comments in the debates were, quote, sufficient for the annihilation of the reputation of the U.S. In a speech today, he also described Americans as liars, untrustworthy, and backstabbers. Last month, Iran's President Hassan Rouhani described Trump and Clinton as bad and worse, but he did not specify which was which. Remember Rachel Dolezal, the, the white woman who pretended to be black and became the head of an NAACP chapter out west? Now she's coming out with a book about her experiences passing for black. In it, she claimed she was discriminated against for being black, which, of course, she wasn't. News of the forthcoming book touched off some outrage in some quarters, including one apparent real black who said on Twitter, quote, you'll never know our struggles, and I don't care how much dark spray that tan that you put on. And the date of the leading software known as Bleachbit, yes, the one made famous by Hillary Clinton, is now selling special cloths for your screens featuring Clinton herself, the product called Cloth or Something. It's for sale online, and it's selling out. Bleachbit was made famous, of course, by Clinton team's use of that software to scrub emails from Hillary's private server. Last year, when Fox's Ed Henry asked Clinton if she'd wiped her email server, she responded with, what, like a cloth or something? Remember that? Anyway. So, what effect will the reopened Clinton email investigation and the broader-than-expected Clinton Foundation inquiry have on the closing days of this campaign? Also, President Obama says he knows why the White House race is so close. So what does he think is to blame? We'll tell you that coming up. Stay tuned. Brett Baer told us earlier, it appears the FBI investigation involving the Clinton Foundation is more extensive than we knew, and its handling raises fresh questions about how the Justice Department is dealing with the matter. Our nightly political panelists here, Rick Klein, political director at ABC News, and Fred Barnes, executive editor at the Weekly Standard. Well, Fred, what do you think? What is, this this kind of changes the scope of what we thought we were looking at here. Yeah, by a lot. I mean, this is pretty explosive. Uh, if you have a second investigation, uh, and, which could wind up in an, an indictment, 
of somebody. I thought Brett was hinting that it would be Hillary Clinton if somebody's indicted. I think the next step is the Justice Department's going to have to have a grand jury. Are they going to go through the same thing they did uh, with the original in investigation of Hillary and her emails? Uh, and it, it, but, but here's my real question. Fox has broken, and, and, and Brett Baer has broken, an explosive story. This is a huge story. Now, what is the rest of the, uh, of the media going to do? They have rushed uh, uh, to Hillary's defense and attacked Jim Comey, the FBI director, on his uh, statement last Friday uh, that uh, an investigation had been opened about these new emails. Now, this is something much more. Uh, and are they yeah. going to... Yeah, there was a story in the Wall Street Journal over the weekend which touched on some of this. It touched on this, but this has gone well beyond that. The question is whether the rest of the media is going to go after this story and they can get it. I'm sure there are a lot of great reporters out there. Or are they going to make the story, as the Clinton campaign will want to do, Comey's leaking? Right. Well, it does raise this question, Rick, about how far or widespread this story will be seen. And we'll report it on Fox News. We'll doubtless be on it tomorrow. Uh, Wall Street Journal may have a story out. I'm told that the same reporter who broke the story over the weekend is working on this story. But is that enough to project it into the public consciousness, in your view, in a way that would have an effect on the last few days of the election? I think it's going to put a lot of pressure on James Comey and the FBI to provide more details of what they're looking at and what they're finding. Now that he broke the seal with what he put out on Friday, I think the, the, the pressure become, comes from both sides. You're going to have people saying, look, if this is a wider investigation than just emails, then you should come out and, and expose that so people have that information. If it's less than that, the Clinton camp saying, let's see it. I, I think I, I think this in any event, whatever this ends up being, it means that there's going to be a cloud over Hillary Clinton for a good while, even beyond the election. If she were to win or lose, this is something that doesn't go away. And I think the, the idea of the, 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 the Wiener laptop having implications on, on different sets of investigations, again, I think we need to know more about specifically what they're looking at and what they found. And I think a lot of people want to know before Tuesday. And if we go to regular order, of course, Fred, with the, with the Justice Department doing what the Justice Department and the FBI normally do, mm -hmm. we won't hear anything. No. Well, look, I mean, everybody was complaining, at least on the Hillary Clinton side, uh, about his statement last Friday in which, of course, Comey uh, said he was just doing what he promised he would uh, to members of Congress, with, uh, that he would tell them if there was a new development in the Hillary Clinton he's under investigation. No, he's under no such obligation to tell anybody anything about this, though, right? Well, no, he's not under any obligation, but, you know, he looks to me like a liberated man. Uh, that he's been, uh, that he's not going to, uh, he, he's not going to be running up to Loretta Lynch's office and asking for permission to do anything. I mean, I, yeah, I but mean, what that can seems... He, what, can you, what, is, what is it you could imagine he would do? He's not going to hold a news conference and say, yes, we are conducting this big investigation. Well, or he's, is certainly, he? well he's certainly going ahead uh, rapidly uh, with the uh, Clinton, yeah, the Clinton Foundation investigation. Last word, right? We can learn what, what they have found and what they have not found. They're, they're, they're furiously going through these emails to find out well, this is the scope of it. This is what we're talking about. Right. At least that minimal piece would answer some of the questions from Friday. All right, Rick, Fred, don't go away. And every Clinton and just about every Trump was out on the campaign trail today. We'll take you live to some battleground states next. Stay tuned. As polls tighten less than one week away from the election, the candidates and their top surrogates are out and about across the country. Take a look at this map that shows where Republicans are out campaigning for Trump today in those states. And this map that shows where Democrats are out and campaigning for Hillary Clinton. Some on both sides of the aisle are even making multiple stops on the campaign trail today. Earlier today, Trump himself held a rally in Orlando, Florida. That is where we find Fox's campaign, Carl Cameron. Hey, Carl, what can you tell us? Hey, Brett. Well, two, in Florida today, three events, Miami, Orlando, and in moments, he's going to take the stage in Pensacola. Uh, and Donald Trump is charging very hard and talking very carefully about the polls. Uh, he dismisses the polls and says they're rigged when he's not winning. But in the last couple of days, as we've been talking about for more than a couple of days, actually, uh, he appears to have gained a little bit of momentum and he's begun to close the gap. Today here in Orlando, he told the crowd he was winning in virtually every state and winning across the country. And while an average of the polls doesn't necessarily indicate that, it's clear that he's got something going on and the campaign knows it. Uh, there's a huge question now beginning to be whispered uh, about whether or not he really spent enough of his own money and whether or not, given this momentum, timed as well as it could appear to be, uh, will make up, really, for the deficit in ground game and for ground troops that he had about three weeks ago. 
At that point, the Clinton campaign had like 5,000 paid staffers across the country. Trump had about 1,500. Uh, at that time, the number of ground offices and registered volunteers in the battleground states really tilted toward Hillary Clinton. But when the polls start to suggest that people are more interested, more favorable toward him, a lot of times you get volunteers and a lot of times you get ground game at the very last minute. And that's a huge question that's sort of bedeviling the Trump campaign as they close in on now the fifth, only five days of campaigning as of tomorrow. Brett? Now, Carl, uh, the RNC, of course, has its own get out the vote operation. It has not been thought to have been they on do. the scale of what Hillary Clinton has. But what is, this, what is the thinking there about whether their operation will, in the end, be sufficient? Right. There, there is some symmetry and there is some overlap, but it drives the Republican National Committee crazy when people talk about the Trump campaign's organization being sort of lesser than Hillary Clinton's, because the RNC has, on the independent side, offices for the down-ballot candidates, the Senate, the House, and state legislative, and even governors. So they're quite eager to talk about how great they've been doing that, because they've been working on it for quite some time. Even before the primaries, they were building out that kind of an infrastructure. But that's something that is both shared with Trump and also consumed by a lot of the other folks. Uh, the RNC and the Trump campaign both have shared campaign finance uh, uh, coffers. And most of that money has really been channeled to the down ballot, ballot candidates, which is why yesterday we had the announcement that Trump was going to infuse some $25 million of new ads in 13 battleground states. Uh, he has essentially outlined his map, and it does include states like Michigan and Wisconsin, uh, New Mexico, that have been, were thought to be probably out of reach. He's re-included Virginia in the mix, having sort of closed down operations there for a couple of weeks. So they okay. see the momentum, and now they're trying to make that organization fit with it. Okay, Carl, good. Thanks very much. Today on the campaign trail, Hillary Clinton steered clear of the subject of FBI Director James Comey and his investigations. It fell, therefore, to others to sow doubts about Mr. Comey. I wonder who he was talking about when he was talking about incomplete information and leaks. Hillary Clinton herself was campaigning in Nevada today, where we find Fox News correspondent Jennifer Griffin on the Clinton campaign bus. Hi, Jen, this is getting to be a regular thing. Reporting on the fly. Well, we couldn't do that back in my day. What's, what happened there today? Well, Britt, we just left the event here in Nevada. She flew out to Nevada from the East Coast. Uh, a very interesting st uh, stop because she is going to be appealing to Latino voters out here. As you mentioned, she did not mention the FBI director or the FBI investigation. She is leaving that to surrogates, uh, surrogates like the president, as well as uh, Chuck Schumer. The Senator Chuck Schumer says he's lost confidence in James Comey, but that not coming from the Clinton campaign today. Hillary Clinton preferred to talk about the Latino vote and appeal to African Americans. Both groups she needs to win this election, uh, particularly here in Nevada, where the latest Real Clear Politics average of polls shows that Donald Trump is up by 1.3 percentage points. Uh, a new CNN ORC poll, however, shows him up by six points here in Nevada. So that is why she is here today. Um, here's what she said just moments ago. Just think, just think about what life would be like for women and girls. Our girls would grow up with a president who proudly ranks women by their looks. And imagine how it will affect our boys to grow up with a president who talks and acts like that. Donald Trump has shown us the kind of person he is and the kind of president he would be. Now, one of the big concerns of the campaign is the African-American vote. African-American voters have not been coming out um, as strongly as they did in 2012. That is why President Obama was in North Carolina today. Here's what he said. There are groups that are not even making secret plans. They're just out in public saying, we're going to try and suppress the African-American vote on Election Day or the youth vote on Election Day. But if you don't vote, then you've done the work of those who would suppress your vote without them having to lift a finger. Your vote matters. Young people especially, your vote matters. 
The campaign says that they do not believe that the FBI investigation has hurt them in the polls. In fact, they point to record-breaking um, fundraising online. They say they've raised $11.5 million since last Friday. That is as large an amount as they did during the convention. Um, they plan to spend that on advertising. If you look at Florida, they are finding that Latino voters are coming out twice as many Latino voters are voting in early uh, early voting in Florida compared to 2012. Hillary Clinton is on her way uh, now to the airport. She will be heading to Arizona. Arizona, typically red state, but the Democrats think that they can flip it. Right now, um, it is a tight race down in Arizona. Back to you, Britt. Thanks, Jennifer. Great job. Great job keeping your balance on a moving bus. Thank you. And believe it or not, many young people have no idea what one of our most famous founding fathers actually did. Campus craziness is next. Time now to take a look at some of the craziness at campuses across America. A linguistics professor at the University of California at Berkeley says the investigation into Hillary Clinton's email server, email, private email server, is a bitch hunt that targets all women. In a piece published on Time Magazine's website, Dr. Dr. Robin Glackhoff wrote, quote, the only reason the whole email flap has legs is because the candidate is female. Can you imagine this happening to a man? Clinton is guilty of SWF, that's speaking while female. A spokesperson for the University of California at Berkeley told Fox News that the views the professor expressed are personal views and do not represent the views of the university. Incoming college students overwhelmingly believe that slavery was invented by Americans and is an exclusively, exclusively American phenomenon. That according to Professor Duke Pesta of the University of Wisconsin at Oshkosh, who spent more than a decade testing first-year students at five different colleges. In an interview with the website The College Fix, Pesta said many of his students, quote, came to college without the basic rudiments of American history or Western culture, and their reading level was pretty low. Pesta said on one quiz, 29 out of 32 students knew Thomas Jefferson was a slave owner, but just three out of the 32 correctly identified him as a former president. A separate study shows that nearly one-third of millennials, or people aged 18 to 34, think President George W. Bush killed more people than Joseph Stalin. Historians have estimated that as many as 25 million people died under Stalin's rule. The study, which was commissioned by the Victims of Communism Memorial Foundation, also showed that 42 percent of millennials said they were unfamiliar with Mao Zedong, 40 percent were unfamiliar with Che Guevara, and one-third were unfamiliar with Karl Marx. The website The College Fix now has a running list of universities that seek to purge what they have deemed, quote, toxic masculinity. Dartmouth College, Duke University, the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, Gettysburg College, the Claremont Colleges, and Vanderbilt University are just some of the schools that have programs meant to root out to toxic masculinity. Many college students, administrators, and faculty members believe that masculinity is the root cause of sexual violence, body shaming, and terrorism, among other things. The programs often set up safe spaces for male students to contemplate the toxicity of their manliness. If you have a campus craziness story, let us know. Email us and tell us about it. Campus craziness at foxnews.com. We would be grateful to hear from you. And Donald Trump is calling on early Clinton voters to rethink their choice and change their vote. But is that possible in all early voting states? We'll have word on that next. As Donald Trump tries to capitalize on his recent momentum, he is not just making a case to voters who still need to vote. There are several states this where early voters can, in fact, change their vote. Which states allow it? Fox News chief legal correspondent Shannon Breen reports. Shannon? Though the election is still six days away, nearly 30 million Americans have already voted. In the midst of the heated battle for those early and absentee votes, the Hillary Clinton Twitter account tweeted this Tuesday night. Election day is one week away, and once it's over, it can't be redone. Is everyone you know voting? Retweet this. That same night, Donald Trump speaking in Wisconsin encouraged anyone who's already voted for his rival to reconsider. So if you live here or in Michigan or Pennsylvania or Minnesota, those four places, you can change your vote to Donald Trump will make America great again, okay? Just hours later on early Wednesday morning, Donald Trump added to that tally, tweeting, quote, you can change your vote in six states. So now that you see that Hillary was a big mistake, change your vote to make America great again. Fact or fiction? Well, here's what we found. 
It's true that in Minnesota, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin, there is a clear mechanism in place for changing an early vote. In Wisconsin, the law says you can change your vote up to three times. Some states that allow the switch require you to get it done in advance of Election Day. Others require you to show up at the polls to make the change on Election Day. There's been some debate about whether it's possible to flip your vote in states like Connecticut, Mississippi, and New York. But frankly, we couldn't get a straight answer from various elections officials in those states. So the bottom line, where it's legal, it will require a bit of legwork to change your vote if you've already cast it. But with new revelations happening sometimes hourly in this presidential race, it is an option for millions of voters, Britt, who may have changed their minds. That would be fascinating. <laughs> if it, if it, if it, you know, I, I don't know. Will Wisconsin. we ever know how many voters change their vote? I mean, we're really not hearing that elections officials are saying it's happening, but we're, we're keeping an eye on it. Yeah, be interesting. Thanks, Shannon. Mm -hmm. President Obama says the only reason Hillary Clinton is in a close race with Donald Trump is that she's a woman. Watch. Hillary Clinton is, is consistently treated differently than just about any other candidate I see out there. I, I, I want every, every man out there who's voting to, to kind of look inside yourself and ask yourself, well, how, if, you're, if you're having problems with this stuff, how much of it is, you know, that we're just not used to it? So that, you know, like, like you know, when, when a guy's ambitious and out in the public arena and working hard, that's okay. But, but when a woman suddenly does it, suddenly you're all like, well, why is she doing that? Our nightly political panel is back. Rick Klein, political director at ABC News, and Fred Barnes, executive editor at the Weekly Standard. Well, Rick... Does the president have a point that people are resisting to Hillary, resistant to Hillary Clinton because, just because she's a woman? Well, last I checked, Hillary Clinton has lost exactly one presidential race in her lifetime, and she lost it to Barack Obama. I think he made a different argument in 2008 when he was talking about his own history. But this strikes me as a motivational tool. This is like the rigged election. This is go out there and vote because we need to overcome this. And I think this is a piece of the key argument for the close, that they need to get female voters in particular, Democratic base, to be engaged in this. And I think it helps to have an enemy, in this case, the enemy's sexism. Yeah, the, enemy's, the, enemy's, the enemy's men, guys like <laughs> sure, you and me, I Rick so. and Fred, you and me. We're, we're, we're against her because she's... Cause she's a woman. The, uh, no, I think uh, President Obama was right that there is a candidate who's been treated differently. But it's Donald Trump. It's not. I mean, he's treated differently, partly for the, the right yeah, reason. He's, he's a, different. <laughs> he's, he's very, very different. He's from out of left field, you know. So, uh, and and I went and looked at some polls to see whether uh, what we have here is just the normal gender gap. Now, maybe President Obama forgets this, but women tend to vote more liberal and more democratic than men. So uh, I, I looked at the tracking poll that shows uh, Hillary Clinton one point ahead, and it showed her, it's the ABC actually, Washington Post tracking poll, uh, it showed that, uh, that she was ahead by eight points among women, and Trump was ahead by nine points among men. I mean, that's the pretty standard... Uh, uh, Gender gap. Yeah, gender gap. When uh, well, whether they're two well, let me ask you this men question. or what? I mean, I think we 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 kind of think that this claim may be baloney. But <laughs> yeah, um, I do. What, who is it aimed at? Was it aimed at getting women to turn out for Hillary? because of the evil men, or was it aimed at men to try to guilt them into voting for Hillary because if they don't, they'll feel like they're sexist because Mr. Obama said so? Well, he, he said he was aiming it at men, but, uh, you know, the truth is uh, there's been a change. I, I think it's true, and it showed up in the, uh, uh, the poll of the, uh, um, uh, some business magazine. Uh, it showed that Trump has, been, Trump has been gaining among women, that that's helped him uh, tighten the race. Investors Business Daily poll. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that's, and that's a pretty widely respected yeah, poll. Yeah, it is. So that would yeah. be, if true, that's remarkable, and it might help explain this, Rick. Well, I, and I think another piece of this is trying to explain why Hillary Clinton is as unpopular as she is. And, and to, I mean, this is just historic to have these two candidates are, are that unpopular. And it helps to say, even to the base, look, this may be part of the reason you don't like her, mm -hmm. because of the, the coverage around her, because there's something inherently unfair about it. I, I just think it is... It's about getting that base out. That, that's really what it, it strikes me. All right, let's just turn to one other quick thing. We heard earlier President Obama, without naming him, clearly aiming criticism at Director Comey, talking about leaks and incomplete information yeah. and the rest of it. What effect from that, Fred, do you think? Uh, probably none. I mean, he, the, the president said, uh, I'm reading it here. Was well, we that base, ra base <laughs> rallying, too? I'm sorry? Is that base rallying, too? No, what, look, yeah, most of what he's doing is. Uh, but he says we don't operate on incomplete, incomplete information. 
Well, of course you do. When you have an investigation to, to, to get the information, you know, I, I, and then he said, oh, that we don't deal with innuendo and, and we deal with decisions when they're made. Well, there was a decision made, uh, and that is to, to, continue, to open this investigation of these new emails. Well, there was a decision made last July, too, well, that, too. Uh, that uh, he didn't have any problem with, right? right? Yeah, this was a brushback pitch, uh, the high, hard one at uh, Director Comey, no question. that, And I think about as far as he could possibly go without seriously jeopardizing, undermining. He had go out of his way to say, I'm not talking about any yeah, particular... And his own press secretary was saying just a few days ago that he thought he was a man of integrity who would not deliberately try to tilt the election. Of course not. Right. And, and I think I think the message was was clearly delivered to the Hillary Clinton base and beyond that, that President Obama has certain feelings about this. Okay, Rick, Fred, thank you both. Coming up, I may not be winning over everyone, but apparently I have a few fans, at least one down under. I'll read some mean tweets next. Now it's time to hear what the viewers are saying on Twitter. Voice for Ruth said, quote, just want you to know I see you as a cool, relaxed senior dude, but then I'm an energetic young 72-year-old cool lady. Jack Hahn tweeted, hi, Britt. I watch you every day from Australia when I get home from school. Can I have your job? I'm an aspiring journalist at 13. Well, maybe someday. See, folks, I appeal to all demographic groups, though Jeffrey Van Houten might not agree. He tweeted, I can't tell if you're dead or just sleeping while you're on the air. Yet someone called the Fed as a joke tweeted, Retirement Brit, you have less white hair than me, and I'm 40. What shoe polish do you use in your hair? Shinola, buddy, Shinola. And McJack Rebel said, I just love me some Brit Hume. He reminds me of the old E.F. Hutton commercial. When Brit talks, people listen. Lots of wisdom in that, man. Why, thank you for that. And David Ferry tweeted, Watching you during a national election is like eating comfort food during a tropical storm. And finally, Brian Lawrence said, I know you're very good at what you do, and I hope someday you demonstrate it on the air. Well, thanks for that, I guess. Please keep the feedback coming, folks. We really do like hearing from you. Tweet me at, at Brit Hume or email on the record at foxnews.com. That is about it for us tonight. But stay tuned for the O'Reilly Factor. Bill has a special talking points analysis. Can either of the candidates solve dangerous problems? Also, Dennis Miller gives his election survival tips. In the meantime, we leave you, as always, with our political quote of the day, which comes from the late President Harry Truman, who said, quote, a politician is a man who understands government, and it takes a politician to run a government. A statesman is a politician who's been dead for 15 years. Of course, Election Day is just six days away, and we have a full day of coverage planned, as you might imagine, right here on the Fox News Channel. Don't forget to join us throughout that day and the night. We'll be back here tomorrow at 7 Eastern. We hope you will, too. And don't forget the O'Reilly Factor. It's coming up next. Good night.